do you think we should read anything into the word innocent? Or is that definitely Is this the one that Ben Stein used to sleep with? Hmm? He used to sleep with his daughters, didn't he? No. Well, they I mean, literally. They sleep. went skinny dipping together, I know that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was sexual. No. But he used to go to top hotels and book in a double bed, double room, and uh, you know. When they were children, yes. yes. Uh, no, when she was older. <laughs> well, no, you're joking about in, uh, Jamie Bernstein's me memoir, which I read recently. Yes, there's a lot of that in there. Um, he was very omnisexual. Um, the uh, yeah, I was a little bit scared of him, frankly, but uh, uh, he put me at ease pretty quickly when, when I came and played him idiots first, sat down next to him, and and uh, he sat next to me and turned pages for me and, and sang along with me an octave lower. <laughs> he, he was a charming man. And, but you, you know, they say when, when Bernstein walked into a room, the, the temperature went up two, three degrees. And I, I did experience that every time. Uh, I really, he was, he was amazing. And um, this, this particular uh, piece, I do want to call your attention to something. Um, these three notes, which come very frequently. Um, <coughs> Jack Gottlieb wrote a thesis on Bernstein. He was Bernstein's amanuensis, and I only found out about this thesis because one of his advisors was Robert Palmer, who was my teacher at Cornell. Jack wrote this at the University of Illinois, and in that thesis, he had interviewed Bernstein, who told Jack that a particular piece by Blitzstein, which is almost unknown and not recorded, was very influenced and influential on, on Blitzstein, and that was the lullaby from No for an Answer, which goes, Baby, don't you cry, baby, don't you cry, baby, baby, don't you cry. Now, what does that sound like? Right? Yeah. And here it is. Same phrase, you see? So there's a, a kind of common language there.